Okay, well, let's continue as it was. All right, let's just do a refresh. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to record this or not, or I may have to edit it and cut it. Uh, I'll start doing a refresh, Laurie. Because I think you missed the first part, anyhow. Um, so I got the... Um, Remember I spoke about having a um, black edge tile test board. Well, this is the one. I want to try and get it to focus a bit too close. I need to get it beyond the mic. There you go. So the PCBs for this came back from JLPCB. So you've got... Uh, Back edge goes here, or ice core, and then tile, 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 tile. So these arrived, um, which I've got to put some connectors on. And then the other thing that arrived, let me remind you of this, was I've got a bunch of tiles, but one of them is the um, uh, this one is the breadboard tile. So what happens is you put these components on. What I was having a problem with earlier is finding the right connectors. Although I found the double ones fit on the bottom. Yeah. I didn't have any of the um, single row ones, so what I've done is I've modded uh, a right angle one that I had and cut it so that I can put it in. Because what I was worried about here was whether these fit in nicely, because it's very tight, whether they fit in nicely with the breadboard itself. I was worried that the breadboard might be too wide, but luckily the breadboard outline on the PCB uh, on, on the library file that I use in um, in Eagle is actually slightly wider than the breadboard itself, so it does actually fit quite nicely. So that's good. So I'll probably get a solder that up in a minute. I know um, I've got one of the pins missing because when I cut um, this one, no, this one, one of the pins fell out. No, it's this one. There's only seven pins. But for my test purposes, that'll be fine. So I can solder that up. So that looks good. Um, I might get this done. I need to paste this up. I'm going to do this. Uh, just wondering what to do about that mixture. It'll probably be alright for the rest of the stream. Let me know if you get any horrible raspy sounds and stuff. Um, I think, because it's, it's, it, it was upstairs in my loft for ages, uh, and that gets a bit damp. So, um, Moisture may have got in. I literally haven't used it for years. Uh, and I need to use, um, I have to use a mixer because it's a powered mic. It's, it needs phantom power, 48 volts. Uh, the thing I was using before, the lava mics, also has a, um, phantom power, but problem with the um, got a bit of a problem with one of the um, mics but I, I might be able to get that sorted next time so um, what should we do first maybe we should try and get this done Now, if I'm over here, can you actually hear me okay? Put 
change the size of this um, to shear a bloody cordon on it. The um, pop plate, the small back. But let's give it a go, see how we get on. Nice.
some things down. This is just my uh, stencil, also from GL PCP by the way. And it's, the stencil just makes it easier because it's just got to be connected on. So Dave is to be bigger guy should um Down. So just come out of the bridge, it's very um, thick straight out of the bridge, it loosens up when um, Mm. 
Um, I did another one of these. You're doing a lot of stuff with it. Ta da! Uh, I got these from um, DIY store. What did I order them off Alley? I can't remember. I've had them for years. But size wise, that's better because it covers this quite a distance. About that much just fits in. Best place to have. Too bad. It will suffice. And the lights a bit low without the um, lamp on here. Let's see, that is actually pasted. So. I'm going to do another one as well. Oh, I've got the stencil out.
number two. That looks okay as well. It's not focusing very well because the um, mic. I noticed my chair's going wonky as well, which is annoying. Quite a fix up there, isn't it? Right, so I've got two of those. So let's um, Let's see. I'm just going to put this back in the fridge because it's important to keep it cold, otherwise, it does go off. Ah, uh, look, there was the other one. Yeah. On the shelf, down well where it should be. So I need to issues of alcohol. Good idea to do with these in one of these. So I suggest that you don't use it afterwards. Won't taste very nice. Stuff. Probably not going to be very good for your health. In there. That away from now.
for it, so I know if that's it. away um, I mean I sometimes use clocks and I forgot these are always a good idea actually and handling anything that may be more fun watching stuff in it um, what I do need is connectors the uh, hot plates going up the tent Tiles. I'll show you what I'm putting on here now. These are for the tiles. we use for black edge or ice core. Mm 
Mount is ready to rock. So we place that. Eight. Eight. Now I hope it's going to get blue enough. Given the size of that board, it is slightly burned that PCB. What it was. This one looks okay, but that one looks slightly burned. You get the grid of the units that's in this one. Myself at the fumes. They're starting to reflow. Black edge connectors are going. The outer ones aren't yet. Hoping it's going to get hot enough on the outside. It's halfway up to. Yeah. How close is that to this? I think we have. to give it some encouragement in a sec. These connectors can melt. It's a little too long. Oh, it's nearly gone. Let me just get a bit of assistance. Careful with this at home, folks. Don't put your hand over your hot uh, air gun. It's going to give it some encouragement on one side. But it's not. It's not gone off.
some hot air encouragement. Too much now. Really bad. What's that? As good as we can do. That one. <coughs> This feels slightly um, convex as well. Okay. What's that coming off? Can't see your reflow oven. Yeah, I'm not using the oven, Laurie. My oven is being um, uh, sorted to at the moment, so I'm just trying to use the hot plate. I am modifying my uh, oven. It's a T962 jobby, so I'm just trying to improve it. Because it um, has some issues with the airflow, among other things. I want to uh, put the there's a no like an open source firmware. Thing. No one put on it. I think this is reflow the most. I knew it's going to be a struggle. On this. is to try and warm the board up without
think that is about as good as it's going to get. I think the second one's better than the first one in that regard. Might have to go back and touch up the second one. Let me cut the left. Let those um, cool down a bit. Cool. Tea's cold now. Maybe I should use a heat pencil on this. Put that on the hot plate. Wow, this is really wobbly now. It's going to go. Um, the other thing I need to do is solder up this breadboard as well. Um, so Laurie's asking, are oh, ovens much better than... Uh, Hot plates. Well, I always prefer to use a hot plate for like prototypes and one-offs, but I've only got something that's very small. Um, when it comes to production, the ovens are always better. Um, but if you get one of these cheap Chinese ones, um, you know, uh, let me show you. So, yeah, if you look at, um, hold on, this kind of thing, um, what you will need to do though is you'll need to, um, called the T962 or 962A. The 962A has four elements, the 962 only has two elements. But um, both of them you will need to do some modifications on. Um, because, uh, I mean, they're, they're like infrared elements, but they're not particularly well made. I mean, the physical construction's okay. The the earth fitting's bad. You have to fix that. But inside, the insulation is taped down with masking tape. So you need to rip all the masking tape up carefully without breaking the um, foil, and then put Kapton tape down, which is uh, a higher temperature tape. Otherwise, it will stick because the masking tape, you know, burns and the glue on it browns, and it's just not very nice. And then the other thing that you need to do is you need to probably add on um, my advice. There's different ways to do it. I've got two different uh, upgrades. Um, there's one where you use, um, where you can add an extra number of um, thermocoupling places. It already has two, by the way. And two is probably adequate, particularly if you're using the 262 rather than 262A. And you can get these boards from, where did I get one? I think they're on Oshpark, but I think I got these ones from One Bit Squared. And this fits up to four one wire um, 
cold junction compensated thermocouple interfaces to be able to read not only the two thermocouples that are already in the machine, but you can add another two if you want to. You might want to have one that hooks onto the board, for example, or one that hooks onto two places on the board if you want to be um, you know, really aware of what the temperature is in there. And then you have to also upgrade the firmware in order to support that. Um, the other way you can go, the simple way, is by adding one of these in. I don't know if you can see that in there. That's a, that's a um, cold junction temperature sensor. Because it doesn't have cold junction temperature compensation in the default electronics. And there's a mod where you can go and um, add this onto your board. You have to scratch off a bit of the uh, mass in order to get a ground and then do a, I think it's a resistor and faster on a, like a bit of mod wire onto a couple of terminals that are existing on the board. Um, and that then enables you to use the new firmware which has um, cold junction temperature compensation. Because what happens is Inside the oven where the electronics is, it heats up. And because they don't have cold junction um, compensation, they're not accounting for it heating up inside. Particularly on the 262, which has a fry zister on board for driving the two elements. Uh, that heats the board up a lot. It's, it's got a heat sink on it, which is attached to the PCB. It rises the temperature in the whole thing. So what you find is your, your reflow um, Profiles are offset. They're lower than they should be. It's a cold junction compensation. So if you ever get these, you need to um, upgrade them. Once you've upgraded them, they work a lot better. And there are other mods you can do as well, uh, which is what I'm kind of experimenting with at the moment. You can control the way that the air flows. There's a cooling fan in there, and that's really bad because it blows directly on the board. And the Basically, the reflow profile diverges a lot between different points on the board. Um, so you can improve that by changing the way that the air moves, among other things. Uh, you can also add, I believe, um, baffles so that the elements... Um, don't have such hot points where their combined focus, where their combined uh, infrared beams meet. There's all sorts you can do. I've seen all sorts of videos on them, ways of improving. Anyhow, so mine is currently being um, modified, let's say, which is why I can't, which is why I'm having to use the hot plate. A bit quicker to set up anyhow. Let's have a look then. Let's cool down now. Get rid of the um, um. So there is the uh, upside down board. There's the board not quite so upside down with the uh, connectors. So what I've done here, I've got female for the tile, female for the tile, male for the edge connector, male for the edge connector for black edge, i.e. the ice core, and then female, female for the other two tiles. Because if you remember, so if we look at, um, ta-da, there's black ice MX. What I'm going to do is need to separate the um, need to separate off the two boards because remember it's a sandwich you've got ice core on the top and the um, Black Ice MX carrier underneath. I'm just gonna. I use a screwdriver and I use a bit of leverage, lift each corner just slightly. That minimises the bending of any pins. 
otherwise it's quite easy to bend the pins in these um, connectors. Obviously you don't really want to do that, you can avoid that. Now, so that's your eyes port. That's the um, Mix carrier. We don't need that. Right there. We do need this. That's the one. And then this can then go on this. Use my slightly more magnified um, what's this? See if I can find it. Crap on here. Be very careful when you put these in. If you look to the side, you can just double check that they're lined up and that you're not overlapping anywhere. It's always a good idea. Voila. Clean that just a bit. All that needs now is some tiles. Yeah, it looks good. How are we doing with time? Yeah, we're doing good. Um, I could reflow one of these. Actually, let's take the reflow. And then I'll reflow this breadboard. Yeah. What I need to do is put on uh, a tile connector, a mail in this case, because it's going to mate with that big mail. So here's that black breadboard tile. So even though all the gubbing's go on the top here, underneath we have to put one of those tile connectors, which is these. However, I need to be out easily. That's very odd. It's a very short one. Huh? I kind of thought I was going mad then. That is a duff one. The end snapped off it. Missing pins at the end. Mm -hmm. So, what is the best way to do this? Holding them with my hands is very difficult. Even though the pitch is relatively easy to do if it was a chip, what happens is if you're not careful with a soldering iron, because the plastic sheath holds the pins together, it's very close to the pins. When you uh, try and heat it with a soldering iron, you can melt the um, 
That's too crazy. What I want to do here is use the, um, this is the stencil of the Black Ice Carrier. I just want to use one of the, um, Last one.
Aqui. Let it cool off a bit. So that should be the connector on the um, No, I don't have a um, a stencil file for the um, tile connectors yet. So all I'm doing is I'm hacking it just using an existing um, half of the black ice characters, it's the same footprint. Bit of a hack. Yeah. Saves a bit of money when you keep ordering these damn things. Eventually I'll have a proper tile stencil. But they're, they're going to be different anyhow, a lot of them. Um, having one just for when it's got a connector on the back. Because some tiles are going to be this way up, some tiles are going to be this way up. I need to talk about that at some point. Explain that difference. Way too hot. The other thing I can do is probably solder these um, connectors on there as well.
Okay, then I'll sold it on. And then the breadboard is in between. Oh, huh? So the idea is that then fits onto here. The other thing that we need is um, standoffs, these will be standoffs. And these ones need to be, I remember rightly, M2.56 mil. So those can go
and stream. Try not to let them fall out. Those are the standoffs. Um, that. Need to a screw or something on to hold on. Normally I have standoffs underneath as well. For the moment, I'm just going to use the nuts. Two lots of standoffs. In this case, these are. Um, These are the ones without the legs. Let's see. Let's see if I can get them closer to And then the tile itself, basically the connector. Goes into Tile socket. Wow, I noticed actually that one's at a bit of an angle. Interesting. So then the breadboard. Ta da! Let's see. Take breadboard off for a second. Leave you to see without it. So here, the ice core, and then next to that we have this tile. The connector on this side, underneath these headers, and then standoffs on this side. Actually, you see the pins poking through there. I'd normally cut those off, I haven't trimmed them yet. You can see the profile. That fits nicely. There's just a little gap in between the two. Stop the short. Cool. Mission accomplished. So the breadboard works. Um, tile wise, um, that's all turned off. I have uh, some other bits and pieces that arrived as well. I'm not going to have time to do all of those today. But let me show you what I've got. Um, guys, so those are the bread wall ones. Um, I've also got these ones which are quite interesting, but I won't be using these for a while because I don't actually have the parts for those yet. But this is my experimental USB tile. Yeah, my uh, USB alt tile. So that tile 
has on this side, oops, this side here, a USB 24 pin C connector. Um, there's also a little chip on there uh, which does the um, PCM and uh, communication on the CC lines. Um, so it can talk to things like USB uh, powered devices. And this enables me to experiment with things like the alternate mode, which is why I called it USB. Uh, and I'm exploring that as a possibility in order to drive the uh, HDMI over port USB. That's what that one's about. However, I don't have the connectors for that yet. I won't have those for a little while, unfortunately. Um, one of the interesting things about that one, yeah, possible to see is the awkward um, the way that the tabs are done on the USB connector you'll see at the top there but how close I can get it. If you look it's a non round hole it's um, not circular. You see it's offset. So one of the things I needed to check is whether they'd actually do that for me. So I've actually got two drill holes there, one offset versus the other, to get the kind of right shape. But until I get the actual connectors, I can't, I can't test that out. And those are coming from uh, Asia, along with a bunch of other stuff. Um, so that's the USB to arm. I'll do that much later on. Um, I've got the um, the dual encoder motor tile, um, and I've got some bits on order for this. And that uses those um, little white connectors. Or alternatively, I can I did modify this, I think. If you look carefully, you can actually use um, a 3.5 mil terminal block. See the holes there as well, so you can fit either. So I needed to experiment to see with what works. And then in the center there, you can see the small QFN. Uh, motor driver chip that will drive um, you know, these small brushed motors plus a few caps etc. And notice all the components here are on the same side as the tile connector. So when this is on the board it goes down like that. You won't see the components, they'll be underneath. And again that's something I'm experimenting with and I think we can do that in most cases. I uh, have to be very careful about choosing the uh, the uh, aluminium caps on this side here to make sure that they're no more than that they're less than six mil, so like a five point four mil height, five point five maybe might get pushing five point six. You have to be a bit careful. Um, and I've had, actually had problems getting hold of those. Again, those are going to come from Asia. <sighs> so that's delaying me a bit when doing the build up. I, I think I've already received some of the um, motor chips uh, for this week. Motor drivers, I've got those. Dual motor brushed motor edge bridge drivers. So I've got those, but I'm waiting on the um, caps. Um, I've got to get a couple of bits from 
RS. So I might be able to get those locally, possibly. But it's, I'm finding it really difficult to get the right size caps for those locally. So that's on the list to do. Motor driver and encoders. Um, the one, one other thing that I've got that's quite less interesting, really, but I figured I'd do one of these because I needed this, is this is... Um, this will change on the new version of the tunnels anyhow, but it will do for now. So what this one is, is uh, what I call the uh, OctoSync tile. This now I want to focus. Stuff in the back. That's awkward. Hold it for right, guys, and see what's going on. And that's basically eight MOSFETs. So it's, you can sync, you know, several amps for each one of those. Uh, and I can use that for a couple of different things, including driving those small unipolar steppers or switching on loads, that kind of thing. So there's that to do. And again, I'm waiting for these um, uh, MOSFETs to arrive. So look at that. And then the other one I've got... Is the um, photo board which we'll probably look at um, next week? Um, and that would be useful for doing some prototype stuff. One of the things that I probably want to do is do a, um, do a, a connector for the uh, Sailey so I can take some outputs from a tile and put them through the logic tester. I think we can look at that, you know, on the next screen next week. Because that's easy enough, I can just put a connector on the top of there. Just use mod wire to wire it through. At all. In fact, I don't need to because on the top, so on the bottom here, you've got the tile connector. This is which is the high density um, 1.27 pitch. That's the tile connector on the bottom. And then on the top is a 2.54 pitch connector, which I can use, hopefully, to connect to um, the logic analog. So I can then just plump this tile in and use it as a, not only as a process, but also as a, um, as a connection to the logic analog. So I can divert pins inside the FPGA to that. To monitor those. So we'll probably do that. It's probably a good one to do next week because we don't need any specific components. So that's all the tiles I've got. Um, Laurie, hopefully that answers your question. We've got quite a few to play with. 
the biggest problem right now is um, waiting for the components to arrive for the ones that we do have to construct. And then when those come, we can um, I can cover those on the streams. Um, yeah, there we go. This tile on there, and then I'll do some testing with that next time. Just put some LEDs or something on there while I'm through. Any other questions? Because otherwise, I'm going to um, call it an evening. And you know what? I know we had a lot of audio problems, but frame rate wise, been looking good. I haven't um, seen any dropouts. Did you have any dropouts? Um, sorry. Did you see any dropouts through the uh, stream? I didn't actually, I mean, I was over the uh, on the bench, so I missed most of it. No dropouts. Hey, you know, one of the things that I changed is I got rid of, I'll show you what I got rid of at the equation. Hold on. I was using this. TP link because I needed a few different ports because I needed one for the printer and stuff and one for testing. That was causing me issues. Definitely. I don't think it was all of that, but it was definitely a yeah, problem. That's a TP link. So what I what I've actually purchased, which isn't plugged in yet, I'm plugged directly into the router. Um, what I need to try next week is I've got a Netgear, decent Netgear switch um, that's managed and I can do things like duplicate on ports and stuff, which is kind of cool for when you're using um, uh, Wireshark and that kind of stuff, which I'm going to need for my projects. So this is a bit better. I'm hoping when I wire this back in that I won't have... Um, some of the dropout issues. It's kind of cute. Isn't it? We've actually properly managed one, so it's amazing. Pretty good value for money as well. Trouble is, they're a bit small to put in there. So dinky. Anyhow, so I'm going to call it for this evening, and we'll do some more. Uh, the streaming looks good. I have to edit this video because it will be audio crap the front. Um, I'm going to have to think about what I'm going to do. I need to get this mixer out of the equation because that is clearly toast. I mean, I could open it up, resold all the joints, etc., etc. But it's an awful lot of hassle. What I actually probably need to find is a nice. Um, USB to Phantom uh, supply mic with more than one connector. My mic has a, an XLR, sorry, an XLR on the back of it. It's fine. Um, I do have XLR to um, phone. Or don't know if I can go, yeah, I could probably go XLR to Phono to 3.5, but it sounds slightly convoluted. Most of them will have like a 3.5 connector in them. So I need to have a look on Amazon, see if I can find a direct to USB with phantom power, uh, preferably with more than one input, so that I can either use the, you know, the other mics or the uh, standalone mic. The other thing that I didn't do, which is really foolish of me, is when I was over there, I didn't move the mic around. It will swing around. I put it on a on a um, on a, a hook that, or a, a compressed um, 
uh, screw terminal on the shelf. But it's actually got a rotational bit. If I release the, uh, the screw, I can actually rotate it around and get it nearer myself over there as well. So that's going to prove a bit more useful. Because the trouble is with the long, like the leads aren't very long. I just end up, you know, snagging myself. Yeah. But anyhow, thanks guys for joining us. And it is just guys this evening, I noticed. Um, I'm glad we're back in form streaming. I apologise for the audio uh, shenanigans at the beginning. Um, hopefully I'll get most of those ironed out by next week. Don't forget, um, I'm down on Discord. Just have to type the button down there. And uh, we'll continue the conversation. But until then, ciao.